Hello there, this 10 day trend takes us into the start of meteorological spring, but by the time we get to the 1st of March, will it feel much like spring? Well, February so far has been quite wet, particularly for some areas of England and Wales, but it's also been very mild across the whole of the UK. And that's because we've had very mild Atlantic air with us. And we've got that at the moment on as we start the 10 day trend on Wednesday. However, through Thursday, we will see a change as cooler air does arrive. So our temperatures will fall down much closer to average, marking the difference between that colder and milder air in our weather front. And those will sweep across the country through Thursday. There is some uncertainty in the details, but we are expecting a spell of very heavy rain and potentially some quite strong and squally winds. So please make sure you take a look at our day to day forecast for more details on that. But once that does clear on Thursday evening into Friday, we will be into a westerly regime. We will have that cooler air with us as well. It's not significantly colder, but it will just bring our temperatures much closer to average, whereas they have been abnormally high for this time of year recently. So with a westerly wind, we will see showers pulling in from the west. They'll be most frequent across western areas, but we will still see some showers across the east. Fairly breezy as well for many areas on Friday, and some of the showers in the west could be quite long lived, and they also bring a risk of hail and heavy downpours. As we've got that cooler air, as I said, temperatures are much closer to average nines or tens in the south at best, closer to six or seven or five degrees in the north. However, we could start to see some snow falling over the high ground in any of these showers across parts of Scotland. The showers, though, will die down through Friday night and into Saturday. Particularly though in the east, we could see some showers still lingering on Friday evening, but from the west, they will die down through the course of the night. So it will be a much drier picture by the time we get to Saturday morning. As the winds fall light as well, that will allow some fog to develop by Saturday morning. There's some uncertainty in where exactly we'll see the fog develop as it is a few days away, of course. However, it's likely across central and eastern areas of England, we could see some quite extensive fog on Saturday morning. We'll also see a frost develop as well with that cooler air upon us. So anywhere across Wales, Northern England, Scotland, potentially some southern areas of England as well, seeing a chilly start to the weekend. But as I said, it will be dry for many areas. However, notice across the far south coast, there is an area of showery rain. There's some uncertainty in the details with this also. So there is the potential for some heavier rain to linger across the south coast on Saturday morning. We'll also see showers pushing in to the north west of Scotland through the morning. But by and large, it will be a fairly dry day for many areas. There'll also be some sunshine. So despite the fact we've got those cooler, more average temperatures for the time of year, it won't be feeling too bad. Daylight hours are getting longer and longer. So it will be a fairly pleasant day for many areas. But as I said, there is some uncertainty with quite how much rain and how strong the winds will be across the far south coast. So please keep up to date with the details on that through the rest of the week. And then as we head into Sunday, there is another change in the weather. We've got this band of rain moving in on Saturday night. That is a weather front and is wrapped around a low pressure system. And as we head into Sunday, that low pressure system will track towards the south of the UK. However, there is a great deal of uncertainty with how far north or south this low pressure system will sit. It's likely it won't sit much further north than northern areas of England. So for the north of England, it's actually a much more certain picture for Sunday. It's looking like a cloudier day than Saturday. Still a fairly average temperatures for the time of year, but many areas should stay largely dry. However, in the south, where this low pressure system will influence the weather, there is some uncertainty. So this is the low pressure system and this is the weather front wrapped around it. And this weather front, around this weather front is where we'll see quite a lot of heavy rain on Sunday, but it's where that weather front is, which is where there are some uncertainty. So let's have a look at where it could lie. This is a fairly messy map, unfortunately. It's called a spaghetti plot, and it shows you the distribution of where we could see those weather fronts. It's a Met Office model. It's an ensemble forecast, so it's a probabil probability. It shows you a probability of where the different uh, fronts will. Uh, that it shows you the spread of where the fronts could lie on Sunday. So you can see there are there is one or two further north across the UK, but most of them sit further to the south and west, and some of them actually only clip the far south coast. And as a result, there is quite a lot of uncertainty with how much rain we'll see on Sunday and into Monday. This shows you the 48-hour accumulations of rainfall across the UK between Sunday and Monday. 
Here we have the Met Office model and here we have the ECMWF model, the European model. Both models that we look at regularly to get an idea of the forecast. But you can see the different models obviously have these weather fronts in different positions. With the Met Office model, we've got quite a lot more rain predicted across the UK and it looks much drier according to ECMWF. It's worth noting though in the Met Office model there's still some fairly high totals close to 20 or 30 millimetres within that 48 hour period as well. So there's, there, there is a possibility that we could see some quite heavy rain through Sunday and into Monday across the south. But in both it's a fairly dry picture for more northern areas and we've got quite a lot more confidence across the forecast for the north into the weekend as well. So in reality, what we are predicting is going to happen through Sunday is probably something in between the two of these. So this shows us a good example of where we are most likely to see some of the heavier rain. This is the probability of seeing more than 10 millimetres falling in 24 hours. Now you can see that the, the red of the colour, the greater the probability, and where we've got very pale colours, that's a very low probability, so it's very unlikely. So it's most likely across parts of South Wales and the South West, but anywhere extending across to London and towards Essex as well, could see some of that heavier rain as well. So there's the potential for some further heavy rain on Sunday and into Monday, and also potentially some locally strong winds as well. And following the very wet February, it won't take much more further rainfall, particularly across England and Wales to cause some disruption from the rain. So please keep up to date with the details for the weekend. We'll definitely be putting out lots more output through the rest of the week to keep you in the loop. So then as we head into Monday, unfortunately, we've still got the low pressure system that brings that uncertainty with us. But the idea is that low pressure system will sink to the south, taking with it those weather fronts. So it could still be a fairly wet day across the south on Monday. But if that weather front does clear sooner on Sunday, well, everywhere should be into this cooler and drier setup. That's as a ridge of higher pressure is set to build in from the northwest through the beginning of next week. We will, though, have colder air across the UK. So that does mean that it will be feeling a bit colder to start next week. So how long will that higher pressure last? Well, not too long at all, it looks like. This shows you the pressure trend through next through the next two weeks. Blue show low pressure dominating the weather and red show higher pressure dominating the weather. And you can see from Monday to Wednesday, there are just hints of a break in that lower pressure, that more unsettled weather, uh, a break in that weather across the UK, particularly on Tuesdays when we've got that ridge of high pressure. A 62% chance this shows you of that higher pressure dominating dominating it's fairly high at this time lead and however there is some uncertainty between Monday and Wednesday so at some point after Wednesday we'll likely see that higher pressure break down but while it does last many areas will see quite a lot of dry weather probably some chillier nights potentially some further fog and definitely some frosts as well. As I said, from about Wednesday or Thursday next week, that's when we'll return to a more mobile and unsettled regime, which means further heavy rain and some strong winds as well. The pressure setup that's most likely from Wednesday until the 1st of March, until we start meteorological spring, is for low pressure to build in from the north and west once again. This will likely bring weather fronts, low pressure systems into northwestern areas, so that's where we'll probably see the heaviest rain through the week. The through the latter part of the week. In the south though, high pressure, it will probably dominate now and again through the week, bringing drier weather here. However, uh, we will likely still see these weather fronts sweep across the whole country, bringing rain to many areas at times as that high pressure retreats to the southwest, allowing lower pressure to dominate, bringing that more northwesterly wind direction, showery rain coming in from the northwest, but also probably some weather fronts and longer spells of rain. But generally through the week, the highest rainfall or the heaviest rainfall is most likely going to be across northwestern areas, northwestern Scotland, Northern Ireland, northwest England, those sorts of areas, but also into the southwest as well. Whereas the southeast, though it won't be entirely dry, it will be drier than elsewhere in the country. As there will be, as I said, strong winds at times, spells of wet weather too, the temperatures are set to increase a little bit as well. So as we head into spring, the start of spring, the temperatures will rise a little bit after a cooler start to next week. So you can see on here, we've got 
Glasgow on the top and London on the bottom. These are the meteograms which show you the spread in the temperature trend for the next two weeks. Red boxes are the maximum temperature and the blue boxes are the minimum temperature. So for Glasgow, more northwestern area where we'll probably see that heavier rain, it's a similar trend to even where we'll see it, even in the south in London, where we'll see those that drier weather, similar trend in the temperature. So to start next week, we've got temperatures falling towards average, if not a little bit below by day and also by night, the temperatures falling below average as well. However, as we, st and that lasting into the start of next week, however, as we trend towards Wednesday or Thursday, so those temperatures start to pick up just a little bit to uh, average or just above average for both Glasgow. And it's a similar trend. Timing's a little bit different as the air, air takes a little while, it takes different time, it passes through different areas at different times. Uh, but the general trend is from sort of Wednesday next week onwards for temperatures to return to a little bit above average. So as we head into spring, I guess the main message for you is that it, we're likely to see further wet weather. However, temperatures are looking to rise a little bit again. There is some further wet weather though on the weekend, as I've just explained. So please keep up to date with the details on that. And you can do that by subscribing to our YouTube channel. See you later on.